Hello! Today we're continuing our Scottish recipes and we're going to be looking at butteries. Also called Rowies, also called Aberdeen butteries, but either way I prefer calling them Scottish croissants. Which you'll soon see why. It involves a lot of flour, butter and fat and things getting folded. So get your bowls centred in the screen and let's get started. So we're going to start by getting 500 grams of a strong plain flour and keep the bag handy, you're going to need extra for dusting. We're going to mix into it one tablespoon of a soft light brown sugar and a tablespoon of salt. It says sea salt but I use what I want. And mix in one, just one whole sachet of easy blend dried yeast. And just take any kind of tiny whisks that you keep in your pocket at all times and just mix them together until everything's combined. And then Create a well in the centre of the flour. I did this just by jamming the spoon in there and whipping it around a couple of times. It worked perfectly fine. And from into that, we're going to mix 350 millilitres of warm-ish water. Now, don't pour all of it in at once. Do it in stages where you can add it and just until the water disappears and then add some more. You might not even need to use all of the water because it depends on how much gluteners in the flour. Actually, I don't know what it depends on, but I just do what the recipe tells me. And just keep gradually adding the water and keep mixing it up with the spoon until it comes together to form a solid dough. Use the spoon initially because it's very wet at this stage and you want to at least mix it together until it starts to look like a dough before you get stuck into the next stage, which is you're going to have to turn it out onto a lightly floured work surface and get ready for this, you're going to have to knead it for 8 to 10 minutes. Take breaks, but it's going to go from looking this shaggy mess to eventually looking nice and smooth and elastic in a supple form of dough. Just get stuck in. I, I just, I have no idea what I'm doing. I just keep messing around with it until it looks decent. And there you go, problem solved. Next, get yourself an, a nice clean bowl that you can set everything in and some cling film. Uh, you're going to want to grease both of these up just so things don't stick to it and in the off chance the dough does go crazy and triple in size it's not going to stick to the cling film and get ruined. So pop them in the bowl and set them aside for now. So we're going to use this opportunity to get stuck into making what's going to sound like a very strange mixture at first but it's butter and lard. 275 grams of butter and 100 grams of lard. Just mix them together in a bowl until they're nice and creamy. After all this, you know, kneading and creaming of everything, you're going to be quite tired. So what I suggest you do is give the counter a wipe down and maybe have yourself a nice little nap. Yeah, I sleep in the field position. It's because I'm six foot five. But now we're back to cooking. Get your apron on and look at the dough. It's got nice and risen over time. And also keep this cling film because you're going to need some later on. Trust me in that. Yep, put that aside. Keep it safe. But first we need to do is remind the dough it's not in charge. So give it a good bash down. Just knock a little bit of the air out of it to make it easier to work with for the next stage. Lightly flour your work surface once again. You'd only just cleaned it to sleep on it, I know, but never mind, and turn it out. Now we only want to lightly knead it for another one to two minutes just to further develop the gluten, I'd imagine. That's what everyone says when they're talking about kneading, so just give it another quick knead for another minute or two. Our next big job is we're going to have to roll the dough out. So get yourself your rolling pin. If you have a dough rolling pin, you can set it to about one centimetre or half an inch thick. Oh, for God's sake, Greg, maybe I should blur that. But we're looking to roll it out to a length of about 40 centimetres, about 16 inches, by about 20 centimetres, which is about eight inches. You can eyeball it in terms of how thick to roll it out. We're not looking for our perfection here, as you'll see with my finished results later on. But just get stuck in with the rolling until you get the desired length and width. And if it ends up in a different shape, you're ideally wanting a rectangle with the shortest edge towards you because that's what we need to set up for folding. And speaking of folding, let's get the butter and lard mixture. Now the plan of attack here is we want to be able to fold 
and portion the butter and lard mixture in it three or four times, again, much like a croissant. So if you want to put little lines or something to help you divide up the butter, please use something more solid than a floppy rubber spatula. I swapped to a spoon very quickly. Now the bowl here is to spread over the first portion of the mixture, over the bottom third of the dough, and then we fold one edge over until it almost covers it, and so we can place the other edge over the top. So essentially it ends up triple thickness than it was originally. And it's rinse and repeat time. You're gonna get stuck back in with the rolling pin. Try and work gently-ish so that you don't break the parcel and end up causing things to spread out. Happened to me a couple of times because it was being a bit rough and I just had to refold over the edges. But again, we're just looking to spread it out, put the mixture on it, fold it over again and again. Rinse and repeat until everything is used up. And once you're done, you will have something that looks much like it did at the start. The butter and lard will essentially disappear and blend into it. And then it's time to cut and section it up. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. I've seen some recipes saying, oh, make sure you cut them until they're about this length and this size. I, I really didn't care. I wanted to experiment and try different sizes. Small ones, delicious. Large ones, delicious. There's really no difference here. So depending on how big you'd like them, if you want to try and control yourself a little bit, please make them smaller. And of course, grease up the pans and everything is normal. I ended up with far too many. I had to get a third tiny baking tray out, which I put flour on just to see if that would do the trick. And it did. And remember the cling film I asked you to save earlier? There you go. Reuse. Saves you wasting more film. After you've sectioned about, cover them up for about another 45 minutes and preheat the oven to 200 degrees, 400 Fahrenheit. I sprinkled mine with a little bit of salt and sugar, but frankly, that didn't make a difference. And after that, they go in the oven for 15 to 18 minutes. And look at that, they're ready. So as soon as you can, get them out and get them onto a tray so they can cool off fully. And they are better when they cool off. So just give them a little chance to cool in the tray. And that's it. I don't care that they look ugly. They're not meant to look perfect. Some people like them as a flat roll shape. I like them to have layers like there are little croissants and they've got all the different flavors and textures that you can pull apart. Some people like to just eat them as is, but you can also serve them with even more butter because, you know, it's not like we're trying to be healthy here. So thanks for watching, everybody. Full recipe in the description as always. And yes, I eat every single one of these and I don't care. Goodbye.